And I think with probably strange results. Um, I mean, we'll see the response from both sides. But if you're the Biden campaign, I think you wish that this right this night will be remembered in reverse as the president became sort of stronger, including his literally his voice, the strength of his voice over the course of the night, probably peaking towards the very, very end of the debate for the Trump campaign. I think it's fair to say it was the inverse. President Trump, just in terms of his coherence and uh, finishing a sentence and seeming to be in control of his own emotions, uh, started off as strong as he was. The, the strongest point for him was at the very beginning of the debate. And then it... Um, over the course of the night, he became less coherent and more visibly flustered. I don't think either of these campaigns, either of these candidates is going to feel like this was a shining moment for them. But I think that first initial impression, Nicole, of President Biden walking out and his voice being very hard to hear. It's hard to tell what he was saying because his voice was so weak um, and his halting delivery in his first couple of answers um, has got to have put a shock um, uh, put a shock into the campaign, at least at the start, before he started to get stronger. Yeah, I mean, I um, I was on the phones for some of it after that became clear, and there is a conversation happening um, inside Biden's circle, and certainly a much more frank conversation happening inside the Democratic coalition. And I think there will be stories of a lot of concern about the performance tonight. And I think what... When you say conversations happening, what do you mean? I think people are talking... I think the conversations range from whether he should be in this race tomorrow morning to what was wrong with him. I mean, he has a cold that came out. Our own Kelly O'Donnell reported that a few minutes in. But exactly what you Negative COVID test, but a cold. Right. Yes. Um, so those things were, I mean, the reason reporters were reporting on the cold was because of what you articulated. I mean, the voice was very, very soft. Um, it wasn't the Joe Biden performance of the State of the Union. No. Um, it wasn't seizing a moment to get on the offensive on immigration. It wasn't Joe Biden on the offensive on January 6th. It wasn't Joe Biden on the offensive on abortion. His two, you know, shining issues. Um, it was exactly what Chris Hayes predicted. It was Trump moderating not just tonally, but sounding less crazy as he lied as often as he breathed. The debate moderators did not fact check one thing, but they did give Joe Biden time to fact check and he didn't do much of that either. Um, it is not our job to tell people what to see and hear, but I think what I heard from a Biden aide is we can't necessarily spin too much what people did see and hear. Joy. Yeah, I can relate to having a cold. I have a negative COVID test and a slight cold as well. So I understand not feeling well. And, you know, obviously Joe Biden comes in with certain deficits. He has a stutter. You know, he is, it is more difficult for him to communicate for that reason. So there's a lot to mitigate the way that he speaks and you can understand it. And we've observed him for a long time. That said, um, I too was on the phone throughout much of the debate, um, with, um, Obama world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm -hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared. You, right. They're always thinking they're going to lose. Like Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this.